Sunrise and sunset. Promise and fulfillment. Birth and death. The whole drama of life is written in the sands of time. We present a new series of radio programs, The Clock. Time and distance are closely related, and one is often measured by the other. For instance, the distance to the stars is not measured in miles, but in so many light years. The mileage between, let us say, New York and Cairo is not measured in miles alone in this modern age, but also in flying hours. A commuter on his way to the station looks not only at his car speedometer in an anxious way, but also at his wristwatch. The course of a man's life itself is calculated in minutes and hours. And whether that distance is great or small depends on the timekeeper, his conscience. Uh, uh, that was quite a meal. I'm glad you liked it, Fletcher. Avocado, boiled lobster, crepe suzettes. And a good wine to top it off. Could a man ask for more? <laughs> Hardly. Here, Wilton, have a cigar. Um, thanks. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing like a good meal to make a man feel at peace with the world and <laughs> to give him an urge to talk. <laughs> good conversation is the final course for a perfect dinner. Let me tell you a little story, Wilson. You've, you've got some time, haven't you? Mm. This will be worth your while. You know, this isn't the only first-rate meal I've ever had. There was a time once when caviar and lobster were on my menu every day. Mm, is that so? The world was my oyster, Wilson, and I was salting it to my taste. Of course, it didn't begin that way. You used to be a valet, didn't you? That's right. I worked as somebody's boot polisher for over seven years. He was a wealthy man, a multimillionaire. Uh, have some wine, Wilson? Um, no, thanks. Yes, I worked like the proverbial horse for Gregory Richards, and I found that he didn't appreciate my merits. It was rather disappointing, to say the least. But I am a man of some ingenuity. I waited for my chance, and when it came, I was ready for it. The servants have all been dismissed, Mr. Richards. All right, Fletcher. Has Mrs. Richards come in? Uh, just a moment ago, sir. I told her that you were in the library. Has she noticed anything? Not that I know of, sir. That'll be all, Fletcher. You mean, uh, for now, Mr. Richards? I mean, you're going, too, with the rest of them. Oh, I, I, I see, sir. Sorry I have to do it this way, but we're closing the house. You've been a good valet, Fletcher. I hate to lose you. But I have no other choice. If you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Richards, isn't this dismissal rather abrupt after so many years of service? I'm giving you a month's pay in advance. That's fair enough. I don't quite see it that way, sir. What do you mean, you don't quite see it? I have been a little more to you than... Just a valet. Have you? I might say I have been your, uh, confidant. Just what are you getting at? It seems to me that a small, uh, a pension of perhaps $5,000 would repay me for my service. Oh, really? You must admit that I've been discreet, very discreet. Are you trying to blackmail me? If your affair with Miss Cartwright had been entrusted to less capable hands than mine... All right, Fletcher, get out. <laughs> Mr. Richard, Get out before I break your filthy neck. Very well. But, Mr. Richards, you may have reason one day to regret this. Goodbye, sir. Charles! Lucy! Fletcher! Where is everybody? Gregory! Gregory! Uh, what is it, dear? What's going on in this house? Where are the servants? They're gone, Harriet. Gone? What do you mean, gone? Where's Fletcher? He's gone, too. I dismissed them all. Gregory, have you gone crazy? On the contrary, I've made up my mind to a very difficult decision. Have you? I'm sick of this house, Harriet, and everything it stands for. I've made arrangements with a broker to sell it. Without consulting me? I have no reason to consult you about anything any longer. The plain fact is that I'm leaving you, Harriet, for good. Well, so you've come up with it at last. I'm glad you knew it was coming. I'm glad you realize we can't go on this way. It makes it easier. What do you think I am, an old pair of shoes? Do you really believe you can dismiss me like the servants and get away with it? I'll provide you with money. Money? And what about my pride? Do you think I want to face my friends after you've thrown me over for that woman? Then you know. Yes, I know. I've known for a long time. You think you'll get a divorce from me. 
Well, it'll be over my dead body. Harriet. Anne Cartwright, the darling of polite society. Anne Cartwright, the champ. Harriet, I will. I'll ruin you. her. That's what I'll do. I'll splash this thing over every tabloid in the country. And I'll ruin you, too. I'll show you up to your fancy friends and what you are. You wait and see. Why? Why would you? You never loved me. I gave you everything money could buy. Why don't you give me my freedom now when it means nothing to you? Because I hate you, that's why. And I hate her. Oh, I know what her family's like. They won't allow you to get within ten feet of her as long as you're married. You think you can make a fool of me, Gregory? Well, you'd better think twice. So this is how you want it to be? Just wait until I really get started. I'll show you how I want it to be. She won't be able to show her face again. You wouldn't dare. She'll want to run away. And find a hole to hide it. Harriet! The trap! The duck! <laughs> no, you won't get away with that, Harriet! cellar, underneath the cement. Uh, in the morning, they'll never know. Do you need any help, <laughs> sir? Achoo. You've done a pretty good job, a very good job, Mr. Richards. May I suggest that a layer of cement over that tomorrow will hide it forever? I thought you'd gone. Oh, no, Mr. Richards, I'm still here. As you see. Fetcher, don't play your hand on me, Mr. Richards. Not unless you want to face this kitchen knife. All right, Fetcher, you win. Call the police. The police? Go on, turn me in. Oh, 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 Mr. Richards, as I told you once before, you uh, underestimate my value. Why call the police? What do you mean? The police would do neither of us any good. How much do you want? Oh, now, really, Mr. Richards. Ten thousand? Twenty? A bargain's a bargain. Name your price. You may find it rather high. But then, your life is worth something too, Mr. Richards. What is it? <laughs> For heaven's sake, don't stand there grinning like an idiot. What do you want to keep quiet? Everything, Mr. Richards. Everything. Sit down, Fletcher. Thank you. Not there. That's my chair. I know it. <laughs> now, look. You've got a price. I want to know how much you want. Do you mind if I have one of your cigars? Thank you. Of all the... Maybe you don't quite understand the situation you're in, Mr. Richards. Your life is in the palm of my hand. If I pick up that phone, I can put a noose around your neck so fast you wouldn't know what hit you. What are you trying to do? Torture me? Are you just playing with me to amuse yourself before you turn me in? I have no intention of turning you in, providing, of course, we come to terms. What are your terms? I've asked a dozen times. And I've told you. Everything. I'm going to live the way you live and enjoy what you enjoy for the rest of your natural life. Make that a little clearer. Yes, I suppose I must. From now on, I'll be the fine gentleman, Mr. Richards. From now on, I'll see what it's like to live in Velvet. Oh, but of course, you live here with me. That's decent of you. Yes, and what's more, you'll wait on me the way I waited on you. Do you hear? You'll be the valet, Mr. Richards, and I'll be the master. You're mad. Not entirely, no. However... I am a generous man. I won't confine you to the house. You may leave occasionally, providing you let me know where you're going. I don't mind. That's very big of you. And there'd be no point in your running away either. I'd have the police on your neck in a hurry if you did. And besides, Miss Cartwright would also be involved. You wouldn't want that to happen, would you? Gregory, dear, did I keep you waiting? Uh, sit down, Anne, please. Have you ordered? No, no, I... Can't stay for lunch. I have another appointment. But it's been so long since we've seen each other. What is it, Gregory? Why are you worried? Did you tell your wife? Yes, I told her. And she refused to give you a divorce. Well, we were expecting that. She didn't we... refuse, Anne. No. As a matter of fact, she's in Reno right now. Oh, Gregory, then she understood. Perfectly. Oh, Gregory, if you're ashamed of what we've done, you needn't be. And I have something else to tell you. What is it? For a while, I mean, until this blows over, we mustn't see each other. Mustn't see each other? But why? We've nothing to hide anymore. I insist on it, Anne. It's the only way. How long do you think that will be? I couldn't say. A few months, maybe. Gregory. We've no other choice, don't you see? 
We've got to give this some dignity. We've got to protect ourselves from gossip. Gossip doesn't worry me. I've already told my father and mother the situation. You have? Yes, I have. I told them I'm not afraid of scandal, and, and I love you. I gave them a choice. They either see it my way, or I leave the house. You mean that? Of course I do, dear. And I thought Harriet would ruin them. Gregory. This is a fine time to find out. Darling, you look so tired. I am tired. You need a rest. Why not go away for a week or two? No. Bermuda, perhaps, it'll do you good. No, I can't go away. I can't leave town. Don't ask me to. It was only a suggestion. And I've got to leave you now. So soon? Yes, I must. Gregory, what's wrong? I'm afraid, Anne. Afraid of what? Something I can't explain. Surely you can tell me. No, I can't tell anyone, not even you. Gregory, look at me. There's nothing, my darling, that can't be wiped out and forgotten. Wiped out? That's it, Anne. That's the only way. I've thought about it and tried to plan it, but somehow my thoughts were never clear. You've clarified them for me completely. Where are you going, Gregory? What are you going to do? I'm going to erase this problem from my life forever. Once the cake is cut, the saying goes, it is simple to enjoy another piece. Once the timekeeper loses track of the seconds in your mind, the clock runs wild. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And what does it profit the killer to take a human life and lose his own in return? Yes, what is it? Fletcher? Come in, Richards. I thought I told you to call me Mr. Fletcher when you address me, Richards. Do you have the check? Yes. Here. Mm -hmm. Ten thousand. Fine, you may go now. You may even take the afternoon off, my good fellow. I have something else here besides the check, Mr. Fletcher. <laughs> so I see. There are six bullets in this gun. I'm going to fill your rotten body with them. And what do you propose to do with me? Put me in the cellar next to your wife? Exactly. I don't know why I never did this before. It's so easy, it makes me laugh. Richard, you're a fool. Am I? Put the gun down. If you kill me, you die too. You whipped me long enough, Fletcher. The party's over. You idiot. Don't you think I'm prepared for this? Do you consider me to be so childish I let you get away with so simple a trick? What, what, what do you mean you're prepared for? It? There's a note in my bank vault to be opened at my death. That note gives complete directions as to where the late Mrs. Richards can be found. And how she got there. No. You didn't. Put the gun on top of my desk, Richards, before you make me lose my temper. <laughs> and that would be inconvenient for both of us. That's better. You've worked it out completely, haven't you? To the last detail. Clever, wasn't it? Incidentally, you met Anne Cartwright for luncheon this afternoon. You followed me? She's very pretty. Oh, yes, extremely attractive and young. A man could learn to appreciate a woman like that. I wonder how attractive I'd be to her. I'd like you to invite her here, Richards, for dinner. I want to know more about her. I have a feeling that we could become very good friends. Just what are you driving at? I told you I wanted everything, and everything includes Miss Cartwright. Extend the invitation, Richards, for tomorrow night. Why, you... Richards! <laughs> Mind your manners. Tell Miss Cartwright she'll be having dinner with me at eight tomorrow evening, and Richards, that dinner will be for two. Good evening, Fletcher. Good evening. May I take your things? Thank you. Will you tell Mr. Richards I'm here? He's not in at the moment. He isn't? No, he suggested that uh, I entertain you for a while. You? Will you have a whiskey and soda? No, thank you. You don't mind if I have one, do you? Fletcher, have you been drinking? Oh, well, I've had three or four, just enough to make my conversation interesting. Please tell Mr. Richards to call me when he arrives. Are you leaving? Yes, I am. You're very impulsive, Anne. I was looking forward to an enjoyable evening. I even prepared the dinner myself. Fletcher, do you realize that Mr. Richards will dismiss you for this? Dismiss me? 
<laughs> Dismiss me. <laughs> oh, that's very good. <laughs> Mr. Richard's dismissing days are over. From now on, he's taking orders, not giving them. You're not only <laughs> drunk, you're crazy. Am I? Then, why has he changed so much in the past few weeks? Why does he crawl around like a worm, afraid of his own shadow? And why haven't you seen him as much as you used to? You know about that? <laughs> yes, my dear, I do. You see, I've taken over for Mr. Richards. His very life depends on me. Oh, you're lying. Why should I? What good would lying do me? Fletcher, just what did you mean when you said that... that his life depends on you? Oh, it's nothing to bother your pretty head about. Suffice to say that I'm the man worth knowing now. I can do as much for you as he ever could, and more. Fletcher, answer me. What did you mean? Oh... Well, it has something to do with money. He's, uh, he's in a difficult spot, and I've taken over all his financial responsibilities. Now I know you're out of your mind. What would a valet know about finance? A valet, am I? I'm a great deal better than that, Anne, I assure you. I demand to know where Mr. Richard is. He's gone. Gone? Yes, he's uh, run away. He's not coming back. Oh, you expect me to believe that? No, I don't. And that's why he left this note. What note? Here. Well, let me read it to you. Dearest Anne, I'm going away for good. You won't see me again, so forget about me. <clears throat> Fletcher, my trusted friend, has taken over my estate. I can't explain why or how. Just trust in him completely. And it's signed Gregory. Let me see that. There you are. You ought to recognize his handwriting by this time. Dearest Anne. But why did he go? What have you to do with this? You love him, don't you? Well, I... If you love him, you'll be nice to me. The truth of the matter is that your Gregory is an embezzler, and I'm protecting him from the police. Oh, that can't be true. But it is. My darling. Oh, oh, take your hands off me. <laughs> oh, really? Now, aren't you being a little... <laughs> My way. You'll come back. And when you do, you'll make up for that slap. Dearest Anne. Dictators are always small men, either in physical size or in moral stature. The one thing they cannot fight is time. It cuts them all down to the same size sooner or later. Listen as the clock moves on. Who's there? What? Oh, it's, it's you, Richard. Yes, it's I. I told you to get out of town and stay out. Where's Anne? She's gone. But she'll be back. Now get out of here before I lose my patience. I've given you back your life and freedom, haven't I? Get out of my sight and stay out. Yes. You've given me my life and taken everything else. And what you've taken, Fletcher, is more valuable to me than what you've returned. Do you want me to call the police and turn you in? You needn't bother. I'll do it myself. What? I don't care what happens to me anymore, Fletcher. My life's finished. But at least I'll have the satisfaction of seeing you punished along with me. Punished? For what? I haven't done anything. You've been an accessory to the crime. You've helped me keep my secret. That's enough to get you 20 years. You're bluffing. You wouldn't dare to turn yourself in. The bluff's over, Fletcher. For both of us. Put it down. This gun of yours still holds six bullets, Richards. Drop that phone. You're through, Fletcher. <laughs> through, am I? We'll see about that. You've forgotten that there's still plenty of room in the cellar for you. Just a moment. I'm coming. Well? 
Uh, Mr. Richards? Uh, Mr. Richards isn't in right now. My name is Fletcher. I'm handling his affairs. Oh, I see. Well, what do you want? Uh, well, I see you haven't moved the furniture out yet. Moved the furniture out? What are you talking about? Well, according to the contract, Mr. Richards is due to the Kate by the 10th. That's the day. Kate? We're not moving. But this house has been sold, Mr. Sold? When? To whom? Well, Mr. Richards instructed his broker to sell a few weeks ago. The deal's been completed. Uh, no, no. The... Now, wait a minute. There, there, there's been some mistake. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the authorization to take over the premises. Oh. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Richards has changed his mind. He, he doesn't want to sell. The house has already been sold, mister. I told you that. Then we'll buy it back and we'll give them a profit on the transaction. They'll sell it back to us. Well, uh, well, maybe. Uh, in any case, Mr. Richards is the one to decide that. What? Well, the house was in his name. He's the only one who can change the deal. Well, where is Richards? Maybe if he sent a wire... He, uh, he, uh, he can't be reached. No? No. Then we'll have to go ahead, mister. Now, wait a minute. This is ridiculous. Look, mister, I didn't make the deal about the house. It was made with the Sanley Realty Corporation. But don't you work for them? No, and, and if you don't mind a little tip, you haven't got a chance in the world of buying back this place. Why do you say that? Well, the Realty Corporation's going to erect a $50 million office building, and this site is part of the layout. So don't waste your time by trying to make any deals with them. Well, if you don't work for them, who do you work for? I'm an agent for the Franklin House Wrecking Company. We've got a contract to tear this place down and make room for the office building. You're, you're going to tear it down? So you better get somebody to move your stuff out, mister. My contract calls for us to begin work today. That's right now. I've got 40 men outside and we pay them by the hour. We can't wait. Hey, Joe! Yeah. Send the boys in, will you? We'll start, uh, well, well, I think we'd better check to see how deep the foundations are first. And we'll start by tearing up the cellar. Well, Wilson, what do you think? Funny how it turned out for you. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't my fault. No. Oh, it was Richards who made the mistake, the fool. After killing his wife and being taken over by someone as smart as me, he just couldn't think straight. He'd completely forgotten that he'd turned the house over to a broker when he made up his mind to leave his wife. I guess you wouldn't have forgotten about it if you were running the show. I should say I wouldn't. The idiot. If he had only told me... If he'd only mentioned something, I... <laughs> well, that's how it goes. It's the fools who are responsible for all the trouble in this world. <sighs> well, thanks for the dinner, Wilson. I appreciated it. It was certainly one of the best I've ever had. Oh, don't thank me, Fletcher. It's on the state. A condemned man always gets the best. <laughs> time and distance are closely related, and one is often measured by the other. Scientists now measure the distance to the moon in rocket hours, and one day the men of the future may enable you to calculate the mileage around the world aboard your airliner in so many minutes. But one thing will always remain constant. The distance between the prison cell and the death house will always be measured by my ticking as I look down from the wall. The clock will be heard again next week, same time, same station. This program was written by Lawrence Clee and starred Hart McGuire as the clock. Fletcher was played by Leonard Teal. As Richards, you heard Kevin Brennan. As Anne, Barbara Brunton. Gordon Glenwright was the guard. And as Harriet Richards and the agent, Sheila Sewell and Ken Hannum. The clock, directed by John Saul, is a Grace Gibson radio production.